Hello, so um, my name is Dr. Omide and I'm going to continue with a series on uh, blood supply to the central nervous system. So we'll discuss the middle cerebral artery and so the middle cerebral artery usually on the inferior aspect of the um, aspect of the frontal lobe and then the central gyri. Okay. Sorry for that. So the inferior and the middle frontal gyri. Remember, it's on the inferior frontal gyrus that we have the Broca's area and the pars opacularis and triangularis. Then the precentral gyrus, which is primary motor, is supplied by the middle cerebral artery. The postcentral gyrus, which is um, primary sensory area. Then superior and inferior parietal lobules, as well as the superior and middle temporal gyri. And remember, the primary um, auditory area is on the inner aspect of the superior temporal gyra where we call the transverse gyra of Heschel. So you can, we can ask you name the gyri supplied by middle cerebral artery. So this is what you give. Lateral part of orbital gyra, inferior and middle frontal gyra, the pre and post central gyra, superior and inferior parietal lobules as well as um, superior and middle temporal gyra. But we can also ask you what are the functional areas that are supplied by uh, middle cerebral artery. So you have the primary motor, primary sensory, as we have said, the auditory area at the superior temporal gyrus, which is the transverse gyra of Heschel. Remember, primary motor is the precentral gyrus, primary sensory is the postcentral gyrus. Then the language areas. So that's um, the Wanike's area and Broca's area, which is at the inferior frontal gyrus. Remember, Wanike's area is on the temporal gyrus, or rather, part of temporal and parietal where the lateral um, sulcus of sylvius terminates. Then the large association cortex is also supplied by the middle cerebral artery. So when there's occlusion of middle cerebral artery, what are the clinical effects? You get contralateral hemiplegia because primary motor area is supplied by middle cerebral. Why contralateral? Because these um, upper motor neurons will decasset at the pyramids. So this contralateral hemiplegia mainly affects the upper extremity and the face because remember with the homunculus the face and the upper limbs are the ones um, on the um, superior lateral aspect of the cerebral hemispheres the lower limbs and perineum are represented in the paracentral lobule which is located on the medial aspect of the surface of the um, cerebral hemisphere then you also get contralateral loss of position and discriminatory touch because this go to the um, um, post central gyra which is primary sensory region why contralateral because this information sensory information ascends ipsilaterally but decussation occurs at the medial lemniscus so that's why the loss will be contralateral then we have um, severe aphasia remember aphasia you can have um, sensory aphasia where you affect Wanike's area and motor aphasia affecting um, broker's area and if both are affected is what you call the global aphasia so especially if you have your dominant hemispheres remember the language areas are usually in the dominant um, hemisphere so if you're right-handed is your left language areas that are dominant so those are the clinical features of middle cerebral artery occlusion so this is your um this shows you the actually this um, shows you the branching pattern of the middle cerebral artery. So it's usually on the lateral aspect of the brain at the lateral sulcus of sylvius. So it gives our lateral bit of frontal branch to go to a bit of frontal cortex. Then there is usually a Rolandic branch within the central sulcus, and the branch in anterior to it is the pre Rolandic branch. After, uh, existing in the pre-central sulcus and a branch uh, within the parietal lobe called the post rolandic branch or anterior parietal branch then we have um that's from the superior division this is your middle cerebral artery so that's superior division then the inferior division gives branches to supply the lateral aspect of the temporal lobe and some parts of the parietal lobe so you have a posterior parietal branch you have a posterior and anterior temporal branches, which are from inferior 
um, division. And then you also have your temporal polar. So the middle cerebral gives you two divisions, superior and inferior. The superior division gives you lateral orbital frontal to orbital frontal cortex, pre-Rolandic branch in the pre-central sulcus, Rolandic that causes in the central sulcus, and uh, post-Rolandic that gives the anterior parietal branch. Then inferior division gives you temporal polar branch to supply the temporal pole, then also anterior and posterior temporal branches and terminates anterior parietal branch. Then we go to the anterior cerebral artery. This artery supplies the medial surface of the brain. This is anterior cerebral, supplies the medial surface of the brain. So it usually gives an, an uh, medial orbital frontal branch. So it also supplies the orbital frontal cortex, but on the medial aspect. Then it gives a frontal polar branch to go supply the frontal pole. Then it continues posteriorly then gives callosal marginal branch up there that will cause above the cingulate gyrus, but the anterior cerebral artery now continues on the superior margin of the corpus callosum as pericallosal branch. So medial orbital frontal to the orbital frontal cortex on the medial aspect, frontal polar to the poles of the frontal lobe, and then gives callosal marginal that courses above the cingulate gyrus and anterior cerebral continues as above the corpus callosum. So it supplies the medial surface of the brain, so it supplies the corpus callosum, supplies a bit of frontal gyrus, frontal pole, cingulate gyrus, which is part of limbic, then supplies the paracentral lobule. Paracentral lobule is where the lower limb and perineum are represented. So it is the part of the medial aspect of the cerebral cortex, um, just the borders of the central sulcus so it, it consists both the motor portion and parietal portion so part of the primary motor and part of the post central gyrus which is primary sensory so that is where the lower limbs are usually represented so when you have occlusion of anterior cerebral artery you get contralateral hemiplegia of the lower limb okay contralateral again because remember there's decussation that will occur at the pyramidal uh, at the pyramids then we also have bilateral paralysis of the lower limb can occur and this may impair sensation which may mimic a spinal cord lesion then we go to posterior cerebral artery so from this image this lower portion this is posterior cerebral artery remember it's the terminal branch of bacilla so posterior cerebral will give anterior temporal branch okay to supply medial aspect of temporal lobe posterior temporal branch there and then it terminates by dividing into a calcarine branch within the calcarine sulcus and the parietal occipital branch within parietal occipital um, sulcus that usually separates parietal lobe from the occipital lobe remember the calcarine branch is within the the sulcus that separates um, the, the lingual from cuneus um, um gyra within the occipital lobe so this is your posterior cerebral artery you have your anterior temporal posterior temporal then terminates by dividing into calcarine and parietal occipital so it supplies the inferior temporal gyrus the occipital lobe superior parietal lobe the brainstem the core plexus of the third and lateral ventricles as well as the splenium of corpus callosum and the visual cortex so these are the areas supplied by posterior spinal artery so when there's occlusion of posterior sorry posterior cerebral artery not spinal artery when there's occlusion of this artery there's blindness but usually the macular area is spared and when you spare the macular area you get what we call tunneling of vision why because the peripheral visual field is usually blind but the central field is okay so why is the central field all right while the peripheral field is blind the peripheral aspects that are not from macular area are supplied by sorry the peripheral aspect are supplied by posterior cerebral so when you have posterior cerebral artery occlusion you get blindness of the peripheral vis visual field the macular area which is usually the central portion of the visual field is usually spared in posterior cerebral artery occlusion because the macular area is supplied by middle cerebral artery so that's why you get tunneling of vision tunneling of vision means posterior field of view is blind is blinded but the center is um, is all right it has been spared
So what's a venous drainage of the brain? We have superficial veins within the subarachnoid space. They have um, superior cerebral veins. These ones drain the lateral aspect of cerebral hemispheres and drain into superior sagittal sinus. Superior sagittal vein drain into superior sagittal sinus. Then we have superficial middle cerebral vein. These ones are around the lateral fissure and they empty into the cavina sinus. Then you have superior great anastomotic vein drains into superior sagittal sinus and inferior anastomotic vein drains into the transverse sinus. So these are the superficial veins. Okay. So this is your superior sagittal sinus, inferior sagittal, together with great cerebral vein of Galen forming straight sinus. They both come to the confluence of sinuses. And this just shows you the superficial middle cerebral vein. We said it's usually in the lateral um, um, sulcus of Sylvius, and that's your superior anastomotic vein, and this is inferior anastomotic vein. So we said superior anastomotic vein drains into the superior sagittal sinus, while inferior anastomotic vein drains into the transverse sinus, as you can see that into, into um, superior sagittal sinus, inferior anastomotic drains into the transverse sinus. Then we have the deep cerebral veins that usually drain the internal um, structures of the forebrain. So we have thalamostriate vein and choroidal veins that will drain the basal ganglia, thalamus, internal capsule, choroid plexus, and the hippocampus. So these thalamostriate uh, and choroidal veins, they usually merge to form two internal cerebral veins. These two internal cerebral veins then unite in the midline to form the great cerebral vein of Galen beneath the splenium of corpus callosum. And this great cerebral vein drains the deep structures of the forebrain and eventually it will join the inferior sagittal sinus to form the straight sinus. And this lies in the midline of the tentorium cerebelli. So thalamostriate vein and choroidal veins will join to form two internal cerebral veins, the right and the left. These eventually join at the midline to form great cerebral vein of Galen. This is around the splenium of corpus callosum. This great cerebral vein it drains the deep structures of the forebrain and usually joins the inferior sagittal sinus to form the straight sinus, which is located at the midline of the tentorium cerebellum. So this is your great cerebral vein of Galen. It's joining the inferior sagittal, as you can see, to form straight sinus, and it's usually at the midline of the tentorium cerebellum. Tentorium cerebellum is dural reflection that separates the occipital lobe from the cerebellum. Again, Great anastomotic vein drains to the superior sagittal sinus and the inferior one drains into the transverse sinus and that shows you the straight sinus by inferior sagittal and great vein of Galen. Then we have dural venous sinuses. We did a whole lecture series on dural venous sinuses. They also help to drain venous blood from the brain. So the dural venous sinuses usually are connected to extracranial veins via emissary veins and that can be a site for spread of infection. So what are the disorders of blood supply of the brain? We have talked about it. When there's occlusion, you can get stroke. When there's rupture, it gives you hemorrhagic stroke and you can get um, um, strokes of the carotid artery that will give you focal epilepsy, stroke of the vertebrobacillus circulation that may give you focal brainstem syndrome, aneurysms which are dilatations of vessels can occur and that may lead to rupture that leading to subarachnoid or intracerebral hemorrhage which may be characterized by headache or neck stiffness, coma or other neurological deficits. Then you can also have arteriovenous malformations where you have arterial blood and venous blood um, communicating. It could be congenital or rupture, you can have a rupture of uh, cerebral hemorrhage, okay? And this may give you epilepsy or focal cerebral syndrome. Then you have anterior spinal arteries supplying the pyramids, medial longitudinal, fasciculus, medial meniscus, hypoglossal nucleus, posterior spinal supplying the gracile and cuneate tubercle and fasciculi. Uh, then pica supplying the spinal thalamic tract, nuclear ambigus, spinal trigeminal nuclei, then the bulbar branches of vertebral artery that will supply the, the pyramids, remember vertebral, um, um, supplying the pyramids, hypoglossal nuclei, and inferior olivary nuclear complex. So we'll talk about the different um, syndromes based on this. Thank you.